visible face, some of the best kept secrets of the Melbourne CBD. Hidden in the laneways, the most delicious Asian fusion dishes you'll find anywhere. Absolutely and incredible. sweet and savoury. A Thai street food vendor tucked away in a car park. A retail store that has been visited by some of the world's biggest names. And a hotel that looks like a luxurious caravan park perched in the sky. Only in Melbourne. I'm Ross Stevenson, radio guy and avid traveller. Together with my good friend and co-host of our weekly food and travel show, Kate Stevenson, no relation, we are on a quest to find the best food and travel experiences this state has to offer. This isn't a regular travel show. This is a movable feast. Here we are at Block Arcade. Um, there are people queued up here to get into a thing called the Hopeton Tea Rooms. Have you heard of it? If you'd asked me whether Melbourne has a thing called the Hopeton Tea Rooms, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. But there are people <laughs> lined up with cameras. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's seriously. super for, popular. For a cup of tea. Um, so what do you reckon? One of the most beautiful arcades in Melbourne? Absolutely glorious. People don't come here enough, I don't reckon, in Melbourne. I haven't been here for years. But Hunt Leather appears to have gone and been replaced by the Hopeton Tea Rooms. <laughs> I'm still completely flummoxed. Hey, speaking of tea, you like mm. the coffee? Indeed. The newest offering on the coffee block is this place, Barbarella, named after the 1960s Jane Fonda film epic. But the lead actor here is owner-operator Craig Jeffrey, a Welshman who knows how to brew. As he should, he's been doing it for 20 years. Here he comes. Righto. Thank you. So you know which one's which, right? I do. Right, uh, stand by. OK, we're going to require you. You're going to be the third umpire. I'll be the judge. Right, uh, Kate, do you buy all this talk about Melbourne being a super sophisticated international city of coffee? I was going to thought you were going to stop the city of yeah. coffee. Yeah. I think we're a town of coffee snobs. I don't know if we deserve the title. Right, uh, which one's caff and which one's decaf? I've never, I've never claimed anything at the start of this, by the well, way. Well, I'm reading you up. I'm claiming that you do. What is it before you try the other one? What's oh. your, no, 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 no. I'm not going to hold you to it. Uh, you can try to, but before what's your I, first thought? Before I try the other one, yeah. it's decaf. That's decaf? Mm -hmm. uh, what's that? <laughs> that Based caffeinated and that's decaffeinated. So that's decaf and that's cap. Yes. Is that, how'd you go? She got it right. Well done. There you go. Righto, it's time to get to 87 Flinders Lane, the scene of Kate's first surprise. It's quite possibly the best boutique hotel in the Melbourne CBD. It's called the Adelphi. This is the one for me, Delphi Hotel. Funky as mm. hell. Did you see when we passed down Sadez Ezard, the hatted restaurant? Yep. Babo. Do you like dessert? A bit. <laughs> you do, right through there. Om nom. Dessert yeah. uh, restaurant. Dessert degustation, my friend. I don't know, six, eight courses, all the sweet stuff. There are 34 sumptuously designed rooms, each with its own unique decor. You check into this room, and you being the selfish person that you are, you want the best side of the bed. Yep. Which side of that bed do you choose? That one. Why? Because it's my side at home. That's the correct answer. And the reason you don't sleep on that side is because that's the side where the phone is, and anyone who talks on the phone sits there to speak on the phone, and therefore that's the lumpier side, and that's the better side. Next, we're onto the roof where Kate is the next to be surprised. All right, so you're welcome. What do you think? Have I taken you to one of the best hotel pools in Melbourne? Not bad. That's the bit at the end that overhangs uh, Flinders Lane, yep. so you can look down from the bottom of the pool. Sort Plus. of combines drowning with plummeting to your death. It's amazing. It is fantastic. So, uh... So, uh, get in. Get in? Let me get this straight. You want Ross to jump in the pool? Hey, Ross, come here. Have a look at that guy. Ross, jump in the pool. <laughs> nice mover. Hey, seriously, is his name Ross? No, his name's Alex, but it's 17 degrees. You're out of control. <laughs> OK, very impressive, but later on I'll show you where I like to stay, and uh, you should see your body double. That's not <laughs> funny, let's go. Coming up. Our next form of transport.
transport has arrived. You know what it is. Are you feeling nervous? Should I be? So far, we've taken a stroll through town, had one of the best coffees around and met my body double. Have a look at that car. Melbourne used to be pretty much cars and trams. Not now. Our next form of transport has arrived. You know what it is. Are you feeling nervous? Should I be? There's one aspect of it that's got me a bit worried. Uh, it doesn't have a roadworthy. Well, the transport's carbon free, but I don't know about the driver. <laughs> Afternoon, guys. After you, madam. I'm going to go around this way. G'day, how you going? Good, thank you. Welcome. Welcome thank in. you very much. Are you a safe driver? I'm a very safe driver, yes. Very safe. Awesome. What are you going to say? <laughs> yeah. Where are you from, Caesar? I'm from Colombia. Ay, Colombia. Que bueno, Caesar. Sí, habla español. Uh, who uses these, by the way? Is we it... operate uh, normally um, around Chapel Street and Paran, Richmond, Fitzroy, and uh, we uh, move people from bar to bar or from area to area if, they're, if they want to sort of change areas to, to, you know, to entertain themselves. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed about Melbourne of recent times, it's far more of a tourist city than it used to be. It, like, ten years ago, you wouldn't, you wouldn't find tourists, you know, hordes of tourists walking the street, but you, you do tend to see that now. Because in the time that I've been here, it's been, well, it's been like a decade now. <laughs> and it definitely, it's, it's definitely changed. Like, the weather changed, the more people coming in changed, the new, more, new places, new activities. Uh, definitely, there is more to see now. There we go, you've got to look at it, my favourite view. Yeah, it's good. Oh, my Lord. It's just amazing. Right, that is fantastic. You're a superstar, Caesar. Guys, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for showing people around our beautiful city. We do have gracias. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Having survived that near-death experience, we arrive at Centre Place, located between Collins Place and Flinders Lane. We might be late for the tour, but I don't know that we've missed anything. Oh, hello. How are you? Glad you could find us in the lane lanes. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do after I've talked about this little area is we're going to make our way up to the other end. This is where we come to eat because it's great, reasonably priced food. Yeah. Follow us this way. Fiona Sweetman runs Hidden Secrets Tours, home of the original Arcades and Laneways Walking Tour, founded in 2004. Well, these are great little cafes. They're all independently owned, which I think is really important. When you come to a big city, the village is what we're trying to create for you. We're just going to stop here, actually. Yeah, what are we going to um, what I love about this little place here is the post-it notes. So this is about the city, how it evolves, and some of us are not all fortunate, but you and I can pay it forward. So they know that they can come here? They do. Right, uh. They do, and they don't feel alienated. They may be new to the city, they may have lost their wallet. It couldn't, do, not just homeless people. And no. what is lovely is that they really do it without great question. They're very generous. They're feeding about 40 people a day. And in a city where sometimes cost of living changes before we're ready for it, I think it's a great story. Yeah, it's a, it's a ripper. Time to take Kate on a laneway tour of mine. Reasonably quick, just the one stop. I'm not even sure quite how relevant it is to Melbourne, but nevertheless, here we are. Iconic ACDC lane. Yeah. Right? Um, I came armed with facts that that used to be called Corporation Lane, um, but they changed it to ACDC lane. Turns out most of these laneways around here were called Corporation Lane, so no one's going to miss it. It's not that so we get. So, <laughs> So, we end up with ACDC Lane. Yeah, because clearly they're an iconic Melbourne band. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I do remember discussing once with music guru Alan Howe what connection there was between ACDC and Melbourne. I remember it so clearly. I remember it as if we pre-recorded it earlier today and I was wearing the same clothing. Now, Ross, the, uh, the link between ACDC and Melbourne is tenuous, fragile, negligible, really. It's almost non-existent. They came to Melbourne, of course, all bands did. And they, they lived in St Kilda, lands down the road. A lot of bands lived down there, they were next door to the Masters. Uh, but yeah, this was the epicentre of pub rock, and uh, it was required that you live in Melbourne to play it. They recorded no albums here, recruited two Victorians only. None were in the original lineup, and none were in any, uh, are in the line today. Um, yeah, their connections with Victoria are very limited indeed. 40 kids from Countdown chasing a truck down Swanson Street doesn't make for a historical moment in rock and roll, I'm sorry. And that, Kate, is why it's called ACDC Lane. Yes, it is. <laughs> Coming up, a vegetable dish that tastes better than anything you've ever tried. And I mean anything. Absolutely that incredible. That is sweet and savoury. And 
a store that's frequented by some of the world's biggest VIPs. Can you show us the showstopper? Yeah. Taj over 22,000. So far, we've risked life and limb with a rickshaw ride through the city and taken a tour of Melbourne's world-famous laneways. Hidden down the laneway of Duckboard Place, just off Linda's Lane, is the work of critically acclaimed chef Victor Leon. Officially start. Okay. Hey, how's things looking? Very well, thank ready you. Ready to order? Yes, I'm ready to order. I'll have the crispy egg, man, please. Uh, I'm going to have the scampi spring rolls. Scampi spring rolls, lovely. Anything else? I'm going to have the blue swimmer crab and scallop fried rice. Uh, and are fried you rice? happy if I order some lamb ribs? Yeah, and I'll have some crispy egg bread. Egg bread as well, and the lamb ribs too. The lamb ribs too. And the crispy egg bread. And the crispy egg bread. Fantastic. Thanks, Captain Creative. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Let's get it on the way. Thank you. Cheers. Well, it's contemporary Chinese, so you'll find spring rolls and fried rice on the menu, fancy versions of them anyway, but also dishes like Chinese potato salad and raw cobia. Here we are. Scampi spring roll Hello. with sweet corn custard. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. This is the scallop and crab fried rice. Wow. And the bad news is I've sold out of eggplant. Have you lost the will to live? Got you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Liz. After that near miss, how better to get the heart going again than hoovering into this? Looks like there's potential to be mustard, but I bet you it isn't mustard. No, it's definitely not mustard. There's my audition for a cooking show going. How's your double dipping, mate? Oh, you don't these are. Did I see double dipping? <laughs> it's outrageous. Here we are. We Slow braised lamb ribs there for you. Oh, wow, amazing. Just the condiments here: cashew nut butter, cumin caramel, into the lettuce cup, all together wrapped up like sanchoy bao. Enjoy. Fantastic, thank, thank you. you. There isn't a dish on this menu that disappoints. Amazing, delicious, sublime, you get the idea. But essentially, we're here for the eggplant. Here it is. Spiced crisp eggplant. Where have you been all my life? Hey, Lou. Thank you. What say I go first? <laughs> what say you were ever not going to? <laughs> Absolutely and incredible. It's sweet and savoury and crispy and gooey in the middle. And hot. They're a bit spicier than I remember. Mm, and hot. With a full stop on lunch, time to thank the mastermind behind the menu, Chef Victor Leon. Good to see you. Absolutely fantastic. Hey, okay? hey. Well, we loved the we loved everything. It was just amazing. As always, outstanding. Just one of my absolute favourites in Melbourne. Thank you. Thanks for coming. No worries. Always good to see you. Cheers, mate. Lovely. Thank you, Victor. Have a good day. Sure, Melbourne might be considered the fashion capital of Australia with bunches of designer brands and fashion boutiques, but that's for another day. Today I'm going to show Kate one of my favourite shops. Taft's the pen people. That's right, pens. I love pens. Do you get many people like me who are obsessed with pens and their stationery? We're in business for those people. <laughs> yeah. Can you show us the showstopper? Yeah, you want to see the top? Yeah. The tops? Absolutely. Just bear with me. This is very special. Uh, it's so special, I can't break the seal. Ah. Just a tad over 22,000. Wow. You did say you can't come in here without buying anything. That's my birthday in August, Kate. <laughs> if I'm going to splash the cash, I want something flash. Have yep. you got something a little more flamboyant you for You want me? something a little more showy than this? I'll get it for you, Kate. That's, That's pretty. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> splash cash, flash. Now, this, oh. is, this, this is a... Lovely showpiece for the flamboyant. The wonderful piece about this is it's actually two pens. Don't, don't but, touch it. So you have that the choice of writing yeah. without. So it's a fountain pen at one end. Yeah. And it's fountain another fountain. Pen at the other. Pen. And, and both used in different colours. So what did we say? We start at eighteen dollars and we go up well, to Well yeah, we, we'll find something that fits them all. There was no way I was gonna leave okay. without a small purchase. <laughs> With Ross basking in the glory of a pen purchase, time to schedule in a little me time. Welcome to Kate World. <laughs> that right? Oh, seriously, is it just women who have massages when they're on holiday? Hello. <laughs> well, I was going to say that massages are like museums. They're yeah. things you only do when you're on holiday. Oh, 
every day if I well, could. Seriously, you go overseas and you find yourself standing in a museum and you go, what am I standing in a museum for? I don't go to museums at home. <laughs> I know why it's called vigorous massage, by the way. Why? Because you can get <coughs> two types of massage yeah. and ones where you actually feel it. Because I don't think there's any point in having a massage unless you hurts a little bit. Like that. <laughs> um, the name kind of says it all. Vigorous Thai massage is, well, vigorous and somewhat relaxing at the same time. With locations all around Melbourne, it's a must stop for tourists, shoppers and city workers alike. <laughs> Do you think Sophia means beautiful? We uncover the city's most secret restaurant. Where are you taking me? This is a car park. Yeah. And show you the most unique accommodation if we could just get past its high-tech security system. Uh, here is the key. It gets emailed to you. This has got stuff up written all over it. So far, we've had our appetite satisfied, my stationary obsession served, and our toes pampered within an inch of their 12 lives. And now we find ourselves in a car park when we don't even have a car. Where are you taking me? This is a car park. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, don't I, don't usually, I don't usually don't eat in a car park. Oh, well, I'm a genius, so you just need to trust me. It's been at least three minutes since our last meal, so thank God we're here. It's called Soy 38, which apparently takes its name from one of the most popular streets in Bangkok for street food. Judging by the setup, I get the feeling it's going to be authentic Thai food at authentic Thai prices. I got my bit of paper. What do I do? Seriously, you haven't worked it out. <laughs> this is your area of expertise. Right, we're on 17. Right, right. That's our table number 17. Okay, so you get different types of soup. Yeah. So you can go through there's those. They're pretty easy. Boat noodles. You know Tom Yum. Yep. Duck knowing, noodles. Knowing well. <laughs> Laksa. Um, or a veggio Thai laksa. But then you also got to choose the noodles that go in it. Boat noodles with beef, egg noodles, and I'll order it dry. I'm on the tom yum. There I'm going half half to see what it looks like. So that's ten bucks. Ten bucks, all of them. Outstanding. Righto. So with Ross finally getting his head around the ordering system, all we had to do is wait. Hello. Soup on the side. Soup on the side. Thank you. Yeah. What, what am I get? supposed to do with that? Um, boat noodles with beef, egg noodles, dry, which means that the soup comes on the side, I think. Yeah. Plus, I asked for some meat balls as well. Yeah. I'm on the Tom Yum. What to pour this on? It's got stuff up written all over it. <laughs> well done. It's the cheapest car parking experience you'll get in the, in the centre of the city, that's for sure. Do you eat screen cream? I don't think I ever have, but I remember when I first went to Bali, you know, the carts they used to wheel up the street, they were called cholera carts. Oh, yeah, right. good one. So eat from the cart if you wanted cholera. They love right. their alliteration, don't they? Mm, do they? Right. Um, but now, you know, like Singaporean hawker food and all that sort of stuff, it's a thing. Our next stop takes us from the underground to the roof. This hotel has six Airstream trailers imported from the US. I'm told this is the motel. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot about it, but I've never been here before. It's okay. promising. No entry. It's a very good start. <laughs> right. But, you know, no standing for those who have no standing. Uh, here is the key. It gets emailed to you. Yeah. Right. And this has got stuff up written all over it. You hold it up. Seriously, that's it. You push it. It demonstrates. It connects. And it grants you access. And I'm very, very happy about that. <laughs> How maddening, Can you how maddening is this? Please not be this cool, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> you know the Airstreams are massive now. They're using them for food trucks everywhere. Is that right? Are they, yeah, yeah. Are they retro or something, are they? I guess they're retro. They build them in the US and ship them out here. I don't know. Let's have a look. I don't know that I've ever been in a caravan before. Are you serious? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, this isn't is it? amazing. So we've got a bed, an iPad, air conditioning, most important, all the essential food groups. Do you seriously not, the first time you go into a place, check the bathroom first? Oh. You're in the bathroom in there? Yeah. Shower. <laughs> toilet basin. <laughs> Do the job, Ross. <laughs> if um, bathroom's first, what's second? Bathroom's not first. 
Bar, fr <laughs> bar fridges first. Bar fridges first, especially when you get told that everything in the bar fridge is free. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Girl thinking, boy thinking. Yeah. Time for a drink. I'm out. Cheers. That beer is going to last about 90 seconds. Big day, Ross. Very big day. <laughs> oh, come on. Water, water, everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Thanks, Lurch. Oh, you're lucky, man. Hey, big day. Big day, and, uh, well, just so much to do in the city. Heading away. Who would have thought, for example, that there are caravans on a rooftop down the bottom end of town. Not bad. Mm. Did, um, have you got a favourite from what we did? Favourite of what we did? Beer's pretty good. Really good sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you, uh, are you going to give it a go next week? Yeah. Um, you want to know where it is next week? You can tell me where it is next week? Yeah, you want to know where it is next week? You're going to tell me where it is. Where are we going next week? Why would I ruin the surprise? <laughs> Cheers. Take a movable winery to it. Did the bloke who bought the business off the bloke who invented Segway drive one off a cliff and die? Meet an extremely friendly ornithorynchus and discover some edible gold hidden inside some copper. Right, it's been 15 minutes since we last ate. <laughs>